Hi everyone, okay, so this is like my second video today. Um, the last one was just a clip of some snow leopards playing at the zoo, which I thought was totally adorable. Anyway, um, so this is a video to talk about two things that I saw in the past couple days, or a few things that I saw in the past couple days, actually. I'll start out with the random, only in New York would you ever see this kind of thing thing, and that is, when I was walking to Starbucks yesterday to meet a friend of mine, I get up to the corner of York Avenue and and 80th Street, right next to the Starbucks, and all these people are just standing there, like, on the corner, like, looking at something, so I'm like, okay, what are they looking at? So I look over at what they're all looking at, and there's this dude on the top of this high-rise, it's got to be at least, you know, 30 stories, uh, off, like, hanging off a balcony by one hand, he was going to apparently jump to his death, um, and had a change of heart or something, but he was just hanging there, and we, I watched it for a while, got my Starbucks, came back out and watched it, and, um, <clears throat> if he was hard to miss, he was wearing a bright pink shirt, um, and I guess I went back into Starbucks after a while watching, and I guess he didn't end up jumping, they came and pulled him in and arrested him, um, but it's just, like, sort of odd to me, because only in New York, you know, all these people just standing there on the corner watching this guy, waiting for him to jump so they can watch it. I mean, okay, I was one of them for a while anyway, but isn't it a little bit morbid to just sit there and watch and wait for someone to, like, jump off of a building to their death? I mean, I don't know. It's weird. And then, sitting right next to there were cops, like, they weren't near where we were because this was towards the other end of the, of the street, towards First Avenue, and, um, but there were, you know, police around, and there's this old, seemingly homeless dude, like, sitting there at, in front of this building on the corner there, smoking pot. Only in New York. A guy smoking pot in the middle of the afternoon on the street, while another guy is hanging on, trying to decide whether or not he should jump off a balcony uh, to his death. You know? Anyway. So, um, it was <laughs> definitely an only in New York moment. Um, anyway, so on Tuesday... Tuesday night, I took my friend Meg for her birthday to see um, a Broadway show, and I hadn't seen this one yet, so this is my official review of it. And we went to see uh, the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. Now, the show is only about just under two hours with no intermission, which I think is great, and it's a trend on, on Broadway nowadays. Xanadu is the same way. It's about an hour and a half um, to two hours without an intermission. So you get in, you see your show, and you're done, and you don't have to wait around, and it doesn't take four hours or three hours or anything, which, which I sort of appreciate. Um, so, of course, the show is about a spelling bee and the different kids that are in it who are semi-stereotypical, um, but done in a really funny way. They're not, like, trying to be overly stereotypified, but they're just sort of there and normal as to the kind of people you would see at something like this. And, um, it was absolutely hilarious. I love that they pull people from the audience to come up onto stage and spell words with them and everything, and, and I think the show is absolutely hilarious. It's sort of, um, not what you would expect, I guess, for a Broadway show. It's not a huge production. It, it obviously doesn't cost millions and millions of dollars, like, say, Wicked or, you know, Les Mis or something like that. But it's um, still pretty darn cool, and I like how the theater here in New York that it's at, the Circle in the Square Theater, um, on 50th Street is very intimate. It's very small, and there's a lot of interaction, like the audience members come out and interact, or the, um, excuse me, the cast members come out and interact with the audience, which I think is really great. And um, it would be interesting to see the show on tour, because I know, at least in St. Louis, where they put the Broadway shows that come on tour, it's a big, huge theater. And they wouldn't be able to really have that sort of cast interaction with the audience that you can do in a smaller theater like they do here. Anyway. So I definitely recommend seeing it if you haven't seen it yet. It's very cute. Um, I'm sure they have some sort of rush tickets. Uh, I don't know. And um, it's definitely worth checking out, especially if you like comedy. Um, and in today's age, there's um, not a lot of great musical comedy coming out. And there's Avenue Q, of course, which is probably the best that's out there right now, so. And then, last night, I went with my friend, 
to the movies, um, we went to Union Square and saw Across the Universe, the new Julie Taymor film. It opened on Friday and um, here in New York and I guess in L.A., and it opens nationwide tomorrow. Um, so here's my little review of it. Uh, so the movie is about two, an hour, two hours and 20 minutes long, I think, and it stars um, Evan Rachel Wood and John Sturtis, uh, among other people, and it's done by Julie Taymor, who of course did Broadway's The Lion King, as well as the movies Titus and Frida. And she's known for her sort of intense, very artistic style of doing things. And, of course, after ever since The Lion King, she's always incorporated some sort of puppetry into her shows. And um, this, of course, is no exception. There are, there are puppets um, in parts of it. There are um, weird masks that look like something out of um, Die Zauberflutter, which is also... Uh, a staging that she um, did for the Metropolitan Opera, and it's uh, it's just very interesting. So I think that the the plot of the film, I mean, okay, so the film, if you don't know about it, is um, basically Beatles music. It's a musical featuring Beatles music and uses this the songs to tell a story. So the story is sort of transparent. It's very, I mean, you know what's going to happen before it does. You don't know maybe all the little side things about the, like, the little characters, but the main storyline between Jude and Lucy you sort of know. And um, I think that it could have been a lot better in terms of storyline. It could have been less transparent. It, they could have gotten a little bit more out of it. So it's set during the um, Vietnam War, and there's the whole thing with the anti-war protesting, which of course the, the Beatles were you know, doing at the time. Or, to, or especially John Lennon towards the later part of his life, you know, protesting the war and violence and all that kind of stuff. So um, it's naturally it's set during that time. And it's really interesting. The movie starts off okay. I mean, it, it, at first I was like, okay, what's going to happen in this movie? Because you don't really know right away. Um, and as it gets into it a little bit, as the characters start to be developed um, slightly, you see, you see it coming together. You see a story forming. Um, but overall, throughout the whole movie, the characters, I don't think, were really ever developed fully. I don't think that you were ever really, like, seeing into their, into their character very much, which is kind of sad because, I mean, for really, in really good movies, you want to really be able to connect with the characters and sort of understand where they're coming from and get into them a little bit more. And I think this movie focused more on the artistic aspect of things and the music aspect of things rather than the whole concept. So, all in all, I would rate the movie probably at like two and a half stars, maybe three, depends. So, the first hour and a half or so, it's okay, and then around the time when two of the um, big names, quote-unquote, have guest, uh, guest appearances in the movie, or whatever, cameo appearances, there's Bono and um, Eddie Izzard, and the two of them are really funny, but at that point, the movie just sort of, sort of loses everything it had going for it. It becomes really trippy, um, sort of psychedelic, which of course fits the time period, but it doesn't really fit the style of the movie at all to me. And So I think that it, it could have been good, but it wasn't um, uh, as good as it should have been. And I think that Julie Taymor did an excellent job with the film, but I just think it, it needs a little bit more. So um, that was my review. Uh, Go see it. It's worth seeing, but you can rent it, and it's you're not going to lose out. Um, and I hope you found that helpful.